First at four, it's a changing of the guard for the Detroit Lions, but this switch is definitely all in the family. We just heard from the team. Dr. Fauci testifies on Capitol Hill. As Michigan is reopening, he has a coronavirus warning for all of us, especially young people, and what he's seen that leaves him so frustrated. Good afternoon, Ben. Gary, good afternoon. Cold front sweeping through, and we've got big changes. 40 mile an hour gusts are one of them. We'll tell you what else is coming right at right now, first and four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. We do have breaking news from the Ford family. You may have seen the alerts from Click on Detroit as Martha Firestone Ford announced she's stepping down as the principal owner of the Detroit Lions. The team just wrapped up a virtual press conference, so let's get to Kimberly Gill in the newsroom. And Kim, the Ford family is still in control. Of course, Karen, good afternoon to you. Martha Ford took over the Lions in 2014 after the death of her husband, William Clay Ford Sr. Well, now that she's stepping down, she didn't have to look far for someone to take over. Mrs. Ford is handing the reins to her daughter, Sheila Ford Hamp, who will become the principal owner and chairman of the Lions franchise. Team made the announcement, or I should say the playoffs, twice under her mother's leadership in 2015, 2017. But the team has gone more than 28 years without a playoff win. Sheila Ford Hamp has grown up with the team. We're told she went to her first games when she was five years old. The transition has been in the works for a long time, and Hamp says she's ready for it. I've been by my mother's side for, ma for many major decisions, and I've attended and participated in NFL league meetings for the past four years. It is my goal and intent to bring them the winning football team on the field that they deserve. And there's a lot more to talk about with this transition. What can we expect with Sheila Ford Hamp taking charge? Will fans notice any changes right away? Both Bernie Smilovitz and Jamie Edmonds are working the story for us. They will join us tonight on the news at 5. Uh, and we know a lot of Lions fans will be watching that, Karen. So for now, we'll send it back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Well, the mayor of Ypsilanti has resigned. Beth Bashard has been under pressure after making a racially charged comment during a city meeting. Last night, we saw protesters gathered outside of City Hall and the mayor's home. During a recent vote on an appointment to a commission on discrimination, the mayor said she would be crucified if she voted against any black person on any commission. Bashard had apologized. Today, she posted a statement on Facebook that reads in part, quote, I'm deeply sorry to have my service end and in this way. Sadly, as a result of my actions, there is healing to do to ensure that all residents, including black, indigenous, and people of color, enjoy full equity in Ypsilanti. Republican State House and Senate lawmakers have revealed their return to learn plan for the upcoming school year. The plan calls for $800 per student for K through 12 for every school district. The money will provide districts with devices needed to expand connectivity and develop a digital curriculum. Plus, a one-time payment of $500 will be given to teachers to help assist transition into distance learning. The plan will also include $75 million to cover costs for creating distance learning and safe return to school plans. Governor Whitmer's office had a lukewarm response to the plan and continues to work on her own plan. Her office says a statement saying, quote, Governor Whitmer will continue to work with everyone who is serious about developing a clear plan for schools across the state that prioritizes safety and learning. And she will have more to announce on June 30th. University of Michigan was going to be featured in the white hot spotlight of the 2020 presidential campaign. Not anymore. As we first told you last night at 11, the university has decided not to host a presidential debate on October 15th. UM's president says the school didn't think it's feasible to deal with the ongoing pandemic, take care of students, and then deal with the logistics of that huge event. So instead, that debate has been moved to a performing arts center in Miami. Ben predicted rain. Many of us saw those showers this morning. We're hoping things have cleared out. Ben is back in our local four weather office, and we always are happy to see you back here in the studio. <laughs> Welcome back, Ben. We'll keep our social distance, though. I was going to say, even if we're 200 feet away from each other, it's good to see you, Karen. And yes, we have some changes. That cold front has sliced through. You can still see numbers in the mid 70s on the east side. 60s are what a lot of us are getting, and the dry air is coming in as well. Not much left for the showers. You've seen a couple of those in the north zone in Santa County, and those have 
kind of faded as they moved out over the lake. Otherwise, temperatures falling into the 60s by midnight, all 50s for overnight lows and a little bit of a cool stretch here before the heat comes roaring back as we head into the weekend. We'll look at all that in just a few minutes. Karen. All right, sure is good to have you back. Thanks, Ben. Well, today, Dr. Anthony Fauci and the heads of the CDC, the FDA, and the testing czar testified before a House committee about the coronavirus response. They stress the fight against COVID-19 is far from over. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a closer look at that hearing. Dr. Fauci said the U.S. has been hit very badly by COVID-19, and right now the country is a mixed bag, with some states experiencing declining cases and others surging. We are still in the middle of the first wave, so before you start talking about what a second wave is, what we'd like to do is to get this outbreak under control over the next couple of months. Fauci urged everyone, including young people, to be more vigilant about safety measures. It's a very difficult messaging when people say, I'm young, I'm healthy, who cares? You should care, not only for yourself, but for the impact that you might have on the dynamics of the outbreak. Fauci expressed frustration when asked about seeing large gatherings of people without masks. You should not congregate in crowds. You should keep distance. And even though many people, for a variety of reasons, do not listen to the not suggestion, but plea to not congregate in crowds. Some people are going to do that anyway. If you do, please wear a mask. Plan A, don't go in a crowd. Plan B, if you do, make sure you wear a mask. Dr. Fauci also urged everyone to resist the urge to pull down your mask in a crowd to shout or talk loudly. I would add, it's also important to cover your mouth and your nose. Back to you. Remember, Dr. McGeorge does Wellness Wednesdays every week on Local 4 News today. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., have you noticed your breath might not always smell fresh behind a face mask? Dr. McGeorge explains what's really to blame and how to make your mask breath much better. That's tomorrow morning. Other coronavirus updates. The Ingham County Health Department says 18 people who recently visited Harper's Restaurant and Brew Pub over in East Lansing have tested positive for the virus. They were there between June 12th and 20th. Work in this story. We're going to have much more when you join us tonight at 6. Overall, the state is reporting 221 new confirmed cases in the past 24 hours. Also, we're still losing our friends and neighbors with an additional 11 deaths caused by the virus in the past day. On the other hand, more than 49,000 people are listed as recovered. Family and friends of Rashard Brooks honored his life in a private funeral service today. They said their goodbyes to the 27-year-old father at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. Brooks died on June 12th after being shot by a police officer following an altercation in a Wendy's parking lot. Today, the focus isn't on Brooks' death, but on his life. In honor of Rashard Brooks and countless others, don't stop until it matters that dignity, justice, and equity are a reality for all black lives. Rayshard Brooks' death will not be in vain. The officer who shot Brooks, Garrett Rolfe, has since been charged with murder. Second officer, Devin Brosnan, is facing aggravated assault charges. As Brooks is laid to rest, we're getting a glimpse of how Americans feel about criminal justice reform. New survey from the Associated Press finds 29% think the justice system needs a, quote, complete overhaul. 40% say it needs major changes. That's almost 70% combined. 25% say the system needs just minor changes. While a very small number, 5%, believe no changes are necessary. Currently, Republicans and Democrats in Congress are working on two very different plans for reform. Meantime, bridging that racial divide by making sure the next generation does not repeat the painful past. That's part of a conversation Local Force Rhonda Walker had with a diverse group of teenagers. Take a listen to what they have to say about ending racism, building acceptance, and equal justice. I started the Black Student Union at my high school. Nigel Sanders graduated from Detroit Country Day last year. The school is predominantly white. I thought that starting a Black Student Union would give a place to, for black students to have a voice. Did you notice a change? Oh, most definitely. As soon as we started the Black Student Union, there was an Arab Student Union started. Everybody wanted to, to start their own you know, uh, collectives in order to uh, bring about change and, and more uh, acceptance. I needed to 
join together all of the marginalized groups because North Farmington is a predominantly white high school. So there was just a lack of voice from, from black women, from the LGBTQIA community, from the Jewish community, et cetera. At my school, it's very diverse. Olivia Slazinski is a graduating senior at Bloomfield Hills High School and agrees the groups and clubs make a difference. We are very, like, such an inclusive school. We have clubs of all kinds. We have, like, friend groups that are very mixed in religion, race, ethnicity, all that. And I feel very fortunate growing up and going to a school like that. I think it's extremely important. They also recommend getting exposure to diverse cultures outside of school. I've been volunteering in Detroit for a long time, um, so I've you know, seen people of all different cultures. The Caleb White Project, created by Caleb when he was just six, provides care packages for Detroit's homeless and game nights for kids at the shelters, created and hosted by kids from the suburbs. I think that by providing them with a platform or something that they can expose themselves. How important is that? I think it's probably one of the most important things you can do, just like you know, being face to face with a person of another race, another culture, and, you know, learning, educating yourself about their, you know, their culture, their beliefs. 14 year old Zoe Granger started the Caring Kids Kit also for the homeless when she was 10. Since I was little, I always wanted to help people. I researched and I looked up what they really needed, and it was like socks, water, toothbrush, and toothpaste, and food all stuffed into a new pair of warm socks. I wanted to help my friends also give. Her friends and their families keep them in their car to give them away when they see someone homeless. Rhonda Walker, Local 4. And those students will share more about their experiences, including what they believe is deeply lacking in their education. You can hear their take tonight, right here on Local 4 during our Spirit of Detroit special, Fulfilling the Dream. It's commemorating the 57th anniversary of the Walk to Freedom, which happened right here on the streets of Detroit. Our special starts at 10 o'clock tonight. Still ahead, one of the world's most famous athletes just tested positive for coronavirus, and he's also facing some questions this afternoon about how it happened, we'll explain. Many of us were desperate for hand sanitizer. Now we're hearing some products may contain a toxic chemical. We have a help me Hank alert, but up first, President Trump heads to the border and into more controversy, while Joe Biden looks for some high-powered help from his former boss.